We're going to introduce the concept between negative inducible operons and negative repressible operons. So first of all, I'm going to start with a negative inducible operon. So if we look up here and we have this, repre uh, this uh, RNA polymerase right there, and it wants to bind here and start transcription. But since this is a negative inducible operon, you always have an active repressor. So this repressor is always bound right here. And you need something that's going to inactivate it. So when transcription is on, there's going to be, so if we have right here, this makes the mRNA, and then you make your enzyme here. Uh, we'll draw, let's pretend it's just a purple one. You have your enzymes here that are made and then you have this substrate here that's made before you make your final product over here. This substrate is what's going to bind to this repressor and inactivate it. Bring it down here so then this RNA polymerase will be able to transcribe. So how does this substrate actually bind to this repressor when there's no substrate present in the cell because this is constantly being repressed? Well, in an example like a lactose operon, the lactose is always being, this lactose operon is always a little bit active regardless of whether there is a repressor on it. So there's always a little bit of what's called allolactose being made that can remove this repressor and allow a mass production of, of uh, beta galactosidase, which, which will break down lactose, which is what the lactose operon is for. So that will allow this RNA polymerase here to bind and transcribe. So that is an inducible operon. So you're inducing the ability of transcription. What about a negative repressible operon? So the, uh, actually I'll just get rid of all this. So in this one, a negative repressible means that transcription is always happening. So this repressor is always bound, or it's always, always active, and it's always transcribing, making these enzymes here that are always making something. So an example of this would be something like the uh, tryptophan. So tryptophan would always be getting made, this amino acid, when there's too much being made, the tryptophan will actually come. It's the product, so this is the product, which is, in my example here, tryptophan. Which will come and bind to this repressor, activate it, and then cause it to bind to the operator and stop transcription because there's already enough tryptophan. So when there's not enough tryptophan, this little tryptophan molecule here will release and then this repressor will be released and tri transcription can start again. So those are a negative inducible operon. So the transcription can be induced by removing the repressor. So a substrate will bind to the repressor and remove it. Whereas a negative repressible operon, the product will bind to the repressor to activate it and stop transcription. In the next video, I'm going to talk about positive inducible operons and positive repressible operons.